Welcome back. Now we are actually on to what? Projectile motion part 2. Now we have that what? Our UX. From what I actually discussed from the last class, I said that what? Our UX, which is the vertical component, and our U, UY, sorry, which is the vertical component, and our UX, the horizontal component. And I showed you how we all arrived at what? U sin theta and U cos theta. Now, from your own assumption, from your own uh, normal exercise, you know that what? Um, when you talk about components, component is not the real thing. It's just part of the real thing. Let me put it that way. Now, we have our U. I told you that what? A body that is displaced, that is moving in a parabolic pathway, actually moves with what? An initial velocity. Note that. Number one, it moves with what? An initial velocity. Now, when it is displaced, one of the components is constant and the other varies. Now, the vertical component varies while the horizontal component is constant throughout the uh, what? projectile motion displacement. Now, when the body is displaced, the vertical component varies while the horizontal component is left constant. So we are going to be um, doing, uh, we are going to be deriving uh, um, the what? Time of, uh, sorry, time to reach the maximum height. The time it takes for the body to reach what? This maximum act. This maximum act. Now, from the previous class, I showed you that what? For horizontal, the linear acceleration is equal to zero. So, therefore, from the linear acceleration becoming zero, meaning that what? We don't need the linear acceleration when the body is displaced either vertically upward or downward. The body only um, the linear acceleration changes itself to be what? Acceleration due to what? Gravity. When a body is displaced upward or either downward, your linear acceleration A changes to what? G. Note that. Acceleration due to what? Gravity. So how do we work this out? And from the previous class, I showed you that what? We have some equation of motion here which is what? V equals to what? U plus AT. V squared equals to U squared plus 2AS. We have what? S equals to UT plus 1 all over 2AT squared. And we have what? S equals to what? 1 all over 2V plus UT. Now, we are going to be using some of the equation to what? To derive this kind of, uh, um, the time to reach the maximum height, small t. How do we use it? Now, let us go. Now, we have that word, when a body is displaced upward, we want to know the time it takes for this body to move from this particular position to this position, which is the maximum height. We want to know the time it takes for this body to move from this place to this place. Now, number one thing you need to know is that what? The body displaced upward, is moving in a parabolic pathway and moves with what? An initial velocity u. But what is that initial velocity? I told you that what? The initial velocity is actually divided into two parts. We have the vertical and the horizontal. And I told you that what? The horizontal, which is the horizontal component, is constant and the vertical component varies. So we are going to be looking at the one that varies. The one that varies, which is what? U y as our initial velocity. So therefore, our initial velocity here will be what u y, which is equal to what u sine theta root. It varies. So because I told you that a body that is displaced vertically upward moves with what an initial velocity. Note that. Now, what would be the final velocity of this? motion or this movement. The final velocity, because we are looking at it reaching the maximum height. 
the final velocity becomes what? Zero. V equals to what? Zero. At this maximum height, from what I explained previously. V equals to what? Zero meters per second. Right? Now, our acceleration that is used to move because there is a change in what? Velocity. There is a change in velocity. Now, what was the change that is occurring in velocity? The change that is occurring in velocity here is what? Decrease in velocity. It is decreasing because it has a maximum and it reduces to zero. So, meaning that what? Your acceleration changes to what? G because we are dealing with upward motion and it is what? Decrease, retardation. So, which is what? Minus G. And we are looking for what? Our C. So now, from the equation of motion, as you can see here, it actually follows, it goes with what? The first equation of motion. So let's put it there. The first equation of motion is what? We have what? V equals to what? U plus A T. Now, therefore, our V here is what? Zero. Our U there is what? U sine theta. Are you seeing it? And our A there changes to what? Minus G. And we are looking for what? The time to reach the act. Are you seeing it? So therefore we have what? Zero equals to what? U sine theta minus um, plus my, times minus will give you minus. So you have what? G T. So take it to the other side. G T equals to what? U sine theta. So divide this, you have your what? Your T. So therefore, the time taken to reach the maximum height is what? U sine theta over what? G. As simple as ABC. The time taken to reach the maximum height. Now let us look at the time of flight. The time of flight. The time of flight. Now I wouldn't want to go uh, very far. I will just give you the shortest way to know because in most cases they might not tell you to derive. It's just for you to understand the formula and know how they derive the formula so that whenever a question comes, in any way you can actually solve the problem. So now the time of flight, now number two. Time, the time of flight, which is what capital letter T, meaning that what for the body to move and come back to what the state, the time of flight. Now you notice that what let us do it just a normal trick. We have it that what the time to reach this point is what T, and the time to reach come back to its particular state will also be T. So we can say that what well, the time of flight is equal to what t plus t, which is what two t. As you, as you can see, the time to reach the what the time of flight of the flight is what t plus t. The two t added together gives us two t. So we have that what we know that what our t here from our previous derivation. We have our what, t equals to what? 2, where our t here is what? u sine theta over g. As simple as that. So this is what? Time of flight. And let's take this one as what? Equation star. So now, let's move to the next one. Maximum act. So, which is what h. So let us see how we can derive this. Now, we want to know what the maximum act. That point whereby what your v becomes zero. This is your maximum act from the what ground state. We want to know the value for this. Now, you note that what, number one, the parameters that you could actually see here is that what, your V is equal to what, 
zero meters per second and it actually moves with what u which is with the vertical component varies which is u y equals to what u sine theta so we're going to be looking at one of the equation of motion the one that is actually what relating to this is what we have that what v square equals to what 2a uh, sorry u square plus 2as at this particular point your a your a because to reach the maximum height we have your a to be what minus g note from what i explained your s changes towards h which is the maximum height that we are actually what looking for your s changes to h and what else, what information do we need again? We know that what our u there is what? Our ui, because that is what varies, which is what? u sine theta. And we know that what? Our v equals to what? Zero. So just put it there. Zero square equals to what? u sine theta all square plus what? 2 was your g minus g and you have your what s as what h maximum maximum height so therefore we have it as what zero zero square is zero we have what u sine theta is note u square also take part and this one also will be what square so we have what minus here it will affect this it turns to what minus 2g h maximum so take this one to the other side we have what 2g h max equals to what u square now we have that what sine theta all square i'm going to introduce you to something now all divided by 2g so you have what h max to be equals to what u square sine theta all square over what to g now you'll be looking at it that what this actually this sine theta can also you can have sine theta all square be written as what sine square theta so please don't be confused don't don't be confused so we have it that what h max will be what u square what do you have sine theta all square will now be what we have it as what sine square theta over 2g so that gives us what the derivation of what the maximum act the derivation of the maximum act now let us quickly let, let us look at what the range the range the range From the wall of range. If a body is displaced here and moved to this particular point, the point at which it was displaced and the point it landed back is what? The range. We want to know the range, the distance. And we know that what? When we are talking about the range there, now we are not talking about the vertical component now. We are going to be considering the what? The horizontal component that is all constant. So we're going to be looking at that, the range. So how do we solve that? So therefore, from this now, we still have the option of what? We have what? V square. Um, can we put that this part? Just pause.